Okay guys, so this is the second video um, where we are really delving into the organic uh, functional groups. So again, we're going to be classifying, drawing, and naming structures of organic compounds, and then we're going to be talking about the properties of those different compounds. In terms of nomenclature, we discussed this in the last video, but remember we're going to name the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms using the prefixes to indicate the number. Then we're going to identify the type of organic molecule um, using the right suffix. Um, so we did alkanes, now we're going to be getting into alcohols, ethers, and so on. Um, if there's more than just a straight chain, we're going to identify the substituents by type, number, and position. Okay. Then when we go to put the name in, we're going to indicate the substituents in alphabetical order using the lowest possible position numbers, um, and then we're going to put them in alphabetical order. Okay. So let's look at alcohols. Alcohols are a hydrocarbon derivative where we have a hydroxyl group. Now, interestingly, you know, in 111 we consider a hydroxyl group a basic group. In 112, it's just a hydroxyl for right now. We'll deal with bases later. Um, nomenclature is going to be the same. The difference is to indicate an alcohol, you end in all. Okay. Um, we're going to specify the number and location of those hydroxyl groups. Okay. Um, so here we've got 1, 2 ethane diol, meaning there's one on the one, one on the second carbon, and di meaning there's two. Um, now, alcohols can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. And it, what that means is how many carbons is attached to the carbon containing the alcohol group. Okay? So this alcohol group is on this carbon that's only bonded to one carbon, so this is primary. This alcohol is bonded to this carbon, which has two carbons attached, so this is a secondary. And then this guy has, um, this guy is bonded to this one, and it is a, a tertiary alcohol. Now, the real difference here is um, that it is going to have some influence in the reactions. When we start talking about what happens to oxidizing or reducing reactions here, um, it the number of carbons attached to that hydroxyl containing carbon is going to indicate what kind of molecule you can make. Come on. There we go. So if we look at the IUPAC name of these, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. So this is cyclo hex, and I only see single bonds, so it's ane but there's an alcohol attached. So this is really cyclo, hex, and all. You still leave the AN to indicate um, a, all single bonds, okay? In terms of this one, oh, an understood one. No matter what you do, it's going to be a one, so you don't need the one here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, no. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do it that way because then the alcohol is on the um, the actual thing. Okay. Now, if we look at this, I'm going to go ahead and circle this chain. Keep. Okay, so when you are naming this, you want to do it the exact same way. And so we're going to count to get the lowest possible number. And so if we started at this end, one, two, three, four, five, we would have something on the third and something on the fifth. Counting from this direction, though, one, two, three, four, five, gives us something on the first and something on the third. And so you want to count from this direction. Okay, so what that's going to do is we know we have our longest chain is pent, all single bonds. There's an alcohol group on um, this first position, okay, and 
Then we also have this ethyl group that is on the third position. And so putting this all together, we have 3-ethyl. Then because we need to specify the number of the alcohol group, we're going to say dash 1 dash pentanol. We drop the E so you don't have pentan E all or something like that. Down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be the same regardless of which direction we count in. And so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep. Now, what that's going to give us is we know... It, okay. We know... We know that this is hept for 7, all single bonds. There's an alcohol on the fourth position and a methyl group at the fourth position. Okay, so putting this together, this is 4 dash methyl dash 4 dash heptanol. Over here, this is going to be an interesting one to count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm, no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so it is. It's going to be 6. Now, I'm going to count trying to get the alcohol the smallest position possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six. Okay. I have an ethyl group on the three, a methyl group on the four, and an alcohol on the two. So putting this all together in alphabetical order, we have three dash ethyl dash four dash methyl dash two hexanol. Longest chain here, one, two, three, four. So this is going to be two butanol. Okay. So alcohol groups are going to be polar. They have that OH um, bond that Oxygen is going to be much more electronegative than the carbon, so it's going to pull electrons towards it. It's going to be a, a polar molecule. Now, smaller alcohols, ethanol, um, propanol, these are going to be miscible in water, which means they kind of just mix. You can't tell where one in, ends and the other combines. Um, and if you're of, you know, older than 21, you know that that's actually a thing that we take advantage of all the time. Now, once they get a little bit bigger, the nonpolar region of the, the carbon backbone is going to prevent that miscibility. It'll still interact with water, but it won't be um, quite as uh, mixable with it. So um, alcohols are used as solvents because of that polar side group, um, and the nonpolar side group actually is also really helpful. Um, in fact, you know, rubbing alcohol can remove um, all sorts of things. Um, acetone, alcohol, both of those can get Sharpie out of different things, although, you know, you have to be careful it doesn't remove paint as well. They are also used as preservatives. Um, you know, you look at, you know, vanilla flavoring and other things, they add a little bit of alcohol to keep it uh, fresher longer. Antiseptics, um, you put rubbing alcohol on all kinds of scratches and stuff, it burns, but it's because it's killing bad things. Fuels, we use ethanol in our <clears throat> gas mixture now, um, but, you know, it's really just used as a whole bunch of different things, a whole bunch of reagents. So alcohols are produced by hydrating alkenes. You have a double bond, and what you do is you add... Um, water, 
So you get the OH on one and the H on the other and you now have an alcohol. You can also produce um, alcohols by fermentation. Um, you know, it's more common to think of it in terms of like yeast and that kind of thing. But technically there are um, pathways in, in us that will also produce an alcohol. You can substitute an hydroxyl group on in place of a hydrogen. You can reduce an aldehyde or a ketone to get an alcohol, uh, primary or secondary. It would produce a primary alcohol. This would produce a secondary alcohol. Alcohols can undergo combustion because they're used in our fuel. They can be substituted. They can be dehydrated. You can take this OH and H back off to make a uh, alkene. Um, or you can just have them undergo a redox reaction, meaning either oxidize or reduce them further. <clears throat> so ethers are the first time where there's a little bit of discrepancy. Um, the common name for ether is still pretty, it's used a lot. Now, I want you to use the IUPAC name because that is the way that is supposed to be done. And so um, what you're going to do is you're going to name the short alkyl chain, then with an oxy, and then you name the long alkyl chain. And so like here we've got a 1, 2 and a 1, 2, 3. So we would name this as eth, the ethyl becomes ethoxy, 1, 2, 3 propane. Here we've got an ethyl group and then a 1, 2, 3, 4 group. So this is an ethoxy butane. Ethers are um, going to have relatively low melting and boiling points. It's going to be higher than, al than hydrocarbons, um, but they're definitely lower than alcohols. They are slightly polar, but not really. Um, they're more reactive than alkanes. Generally, the way you get an ether is you dehydrate an alcohol. So you take off an H and an HO, you get water and then an ether from these two things. things. And so this is what you're going to usually see. You're going to see like diethyl ether. I don't want you to name it this way. I want you to name this as ethoxyethane. That is because this is the IUPAC way. This is the way that you're supposed to do it. It's kind of like saying, you know, you should call table salt sodium chloride. I don't care that everybody else calls it salt. I want you to call it the right name because this is chemistry. Aldehydes and ketones also have an oxygen, but now they have a carbonyl carbon, which is a carbon that has a double bonded oxygen. Um, it's not going to be an oxo bridge like with an ether. Now, the way that we use an aldehyde is we indicate that by saying CHO. If we have COH, that looks like an alcohol group. So an aldehyde is going to be CHO, and that indicates the carbon is bonded to a hydrogen and then to an oxygen as well, okay? For an aldehyde, the suffix is not going to be an alkane. It's going to be now an al, A-L. Very similar to alcohol, so you make sure that when you're in lab that A and O look entirely different. If we can't read it, we assume it's wrong. Ketones contain a carbonyl carbon, but it's also going to be bonded to um, two other carbons. And so aldehydes are like this. Ketones are in the middle of two other carbon groups. Okay. Now, the suffix of a ketone is own, O-N-E. You do need to specify the position if it's not an understood one. So aldehydes are polar, and they are going to be... Um, really common in uh, things that you eat, things that you want to smell. Um, strong odors are associated with both of these. Um, cinnamon aldehyde, the key ingredient in cinnamon that gives it that, that smell, that flavor, is cinnamon aldehyde. Um, vanilla, um, the key ingredient in vanilla is vanillin, which is the common name for um, an, an aldehyde. Cilantro, um, a lot of others. I feel like um, I could keep going on these. Now, they do degrade in air because, um, especially in human environments, oops, no, go away. 
because in humid environments they can be hydrated, they can make diols. Um, there's all kinds of things that these guys can do, um, but you know. Another thing that aldehydes are used for are um, because they can make diols because they react so well to each other, um, they will tend to be used as preservatives. Um, formaldehyde, um, which is really meth methanol, um, is used to preserve things. Um, glycer glycerol aldehyde, um, I want to say it's propanol is the IUPAC name, um, glutaraldehyde. I have to think about what the name is for that. But used to um, really lock cells in and make sure that nothing degrades. So these can undergo redox, they can undergo addition reactions, all kinds of things. Ketones are a little bit more polar. Um, usually uh, ketones, aldehydes, are they both have that carbonyl carbon. Um, because of the position, it just depends on which one has the larger dipole moment. They're used as solvents. Something like acetone can get off fingernail polish and many other things. They're also precursors for polymers, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So you can have sugars that are ketones, or aldehydes for that matter. Um, they are also used in um, a lot of body functions. So let's give the IUPAC name for these. One, two, three. This is prop, all single bonds. So it would have been propane, but it's actually prop and own. Take off that E, put on the own. Technically, you could specify the two, but it's got to be an understood because there's no other place for this to be or it wouldn't be an, a ketone. C. There's only one carbon, so this is meth and al. Al meaning aldehyde. This is one, two carbon, so this is eth and al. Kind of like that. Carboxylic acids and esters are the, um, they are also very strong in odors. Um, they are also very, well, carboxylic acids or esters, they tend to be burn. Uh, they, they are, well, okay, so methanoic acid right here. This is the key ingredient in those red ant bites, um, the ones that blister up and you get a blister for a few months. That's methanoic acid. Um, they are acidic. They're not as acidic as what we typically think of. This hydroxyl group, which we in 111 say is usually basic, because of this electronegative oxygen, it pulls the electrons from this bond into here. So you end up getting kind of a resonance. And so you end up getting a partial double bond character and this hydrogen can break off. And so about one to 5% of that hydrogen, um, of the molecules will lose that hydrogen as an acidic proton. In a condensed structure, we write this as COOH. And what we're going to do is when we name it, we end with oic acid. For esters, they contain a carboxyl carbon and then an oxo bridge between two R groups. And what that means is you're going to name them with, um, oops, there we go. You're going to name it the side with the, um, oxo bridge, then you name the chain containing the carbonyl carbon and end in O8. So this is first, this is second. Carboxylic acids and esters also have odors. So raspberry, apple, pineapple, um, rum, strawberry, honey, those things that you typically associate in the kitchen generally have either an aldehyde, a carboxylic acid, an ester. There's going to be something that gives it that odor. Wintergreen is um, a popular one. So these are very polar molecules. Because of that polarity, they have an even high, a, a really high, just plain very high, melting and boiling point. They're used in a lot of things, shampoos, flavors, perfumes. They um, will be 
the scent is added to all kinds of things because they smell good and they're really not that acidic they're really not um, that bad in small amounts and because a small amount has such a pungent odor it's you know not bad they are highly reactive because of the carboxyl carbon and the oxo bridge the this is highly nucleophilic it can attack things and do all sorts of stuff so go ahead and pause and try and name these compounds at this point I'm going to assume you have done that okay so here we have one two three four five on this side one two three four five on that side is that right one two three four five it is okay so as we go to name this you want to name the oxo bridge first so this is going to be pentyl pentanoate and this is all one word okay now over here one two three four this is going to be four so it's butte it should be butanoic acid um, and then one two three so it's going to be three dash chloro butanoic acid and this should be one word I shouldn't have had that space one two three four five this is pentanoic acid you can kind of see I had a thing for five this day two words here this is an ester one two three four so this is butyl one two three four five pentanoate now at this point we've talked about a whole lot of um, organic organic molecules that have an oxygen attached okay um, and so we can kind of start talking about when we oxidize we're increasing the number of bonds to oxygen high, uh, reducing we're going to be reducing the number of bonds to oxygen and so like for example we can go from um, how am I going to draw this an alkane we can add an oxygen to get an two three an alcohol we could oxidize that further to get an aldehyde okay and so it really allows us to um, discuss how these things could happen. Now, if we oxidize this and it was a secondary alcohol, oxidizing this further, two, three, four, is going to now be a ketone. And so secondary alcohols oxidize to give um, ketones, primary alcohols oxidize to give aldehydes. And so we can really kind of get uh, specific about how the oxidation reduction of these is going to happen. We can also talk about how you can further oxidize an aldehyde to give a carboxylic acid. And really, guys, the way I'm going to write this is I'm always going to do COOH. I don't like that uh, too because I don't want there to be any um, question of how the oxygens are bonded together. Okay. Now, last classification of organic compounds are amines and amides. Amines and amides both contain a nitrogen. Amines have a nitrogen with some number of hydrogens attached. They can be primary where there's one carbon group attached. They can be secondary where there's two carbons attached. Or they can be tertiary where there's three carbons attached. Honestly, you name the um, alkyl substituents in alphabetical order, and then you end with amine. So this is methylamine, dimethylamine, triethylamine. If this was um, CH2CH3, it would be ethyl dimethylamine. 
Now, because amides are going to have a, a double bond, a carbonyl carbon attached, you typically have an amide group that looks like this. These are most common in proteins. We typically stay away from amides in terms of drawing just because it gets kind of complicated. But amines and amides are important for biofunctions, specifically with amino acid and protein linkages. They can also be used in dyes. They're really big in drug design. Um, there is something about that amine amide linkage that just really works well with our neurotransmitters. Okay. So here's kind of my flashcard slide. You know, if you really want to memorize these um, groups, I would go ahead and make sure that you have some kind of indication of how to uh, write these, but it's up to you how you study. So now just to kind of make sure that we are on the same page, let's do a couple of slides of practice. Provide the IUPAC name for the following. If at this point, again, I would hit pause and try to do it that way, but it's totally up to you. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Either way, it's going to be the same for the alcohol, but this is shorter from this way. One, two, three. So this is three methyl. There should be a dash there. Dash four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, heptanol. Down here, this is one, two, one, two. So this is an ether. This is ethoxy. Ethane, one, two, this is eth and al, one, two, this is an ethyl, one, two, three, so this is ethyl propyl amine. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is four bromo. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, heptanol. This one looks worse than it is. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is chloro, ethyl, CL comes first. So three chloro. Four ethyl, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, two hexanol. And that should be a dash in there, so let me rewrite that part. This is methyl cyclopentane. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're probably going to get the same name regardless of how you circle. That's just how I do my compounds. Um, so don't panic unless you're getting something completely different. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, so three and four, uh, one, two, two and four. So this is two, four, dash, dimethyl, dash two, one, two, three, four, five, six, hexene. This one is ethyl, or eth eth I'm sorry, it's an ethyl group and a propyl group. So this is ethoxy propane. One, two, three. This is propanone. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four. This is four methyl. One, two, three, four, five. Pentamide. I try to stay away from amides on exams, though, just because they can be kind of 
burdensome. Okay, so draw the structure for these. Oh, golly, that's a bad name. I'm going to fix that in your slides right now. Um, this should be propoxypropane. Okay, so here, <coughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, nope, one, two, three, kind of like that. Two, two, dimethyl hexanol, one, two, three, four, five, six, so two, two, dimethyl and an alcohol on the three. Two ethoxy butane. Should just be ethoxy butane. I probably meant to put it like a chlorine attached, but that's okay. Ethoxy butane. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Pentanoic acid. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, kind of like that. Ethyl methylamine. There we go. Hexanol. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, dichloro one hexanol. Make sure in lab that you're doing the bond to the oxygen and that it's definitely attached to the oxygen, okay? Cyclopropane is just your triangle. That looks a little extended. There we go. That should be it for this video. Just make sure that you guys are really reviewing this. I know there's a ton of compounds here, so don't get overwhelmed. Just keep practicing. There's a lot of supplemental drawing, a lot of supplemental homework that you can do. Okay?